everyone, and I hope that you're all doing fine. Today we are going to speak about Gothicism. The Gothic novel was firstly introduced to English literature by Horace Walpole, whose work The Castle of Otranto, written in 1764, gathers all the elements that constitute the genre. Walpole's novel was notably inspirational that it had been recreated through novels, short stories, poetry and even films, and it is still being imitated up to the present day. So, how can we label a work of fiction to be Gothic? Well, the answer is, there are some characters that allow us to categorize any literary text as a Gothic one. First, sitting in a castle, or near an old one, that is seemingly abandoned. The castle often contains secret passages, trap doors, secret rooms, dark or hidden staircases, and ruined sections. The events may also take place in cemeteries, graveyards, forests, or caves. Generally, in Gothic fiction, there is a sense of medieval nostalgia. Second, an atmosphere of mystery and suspense. The work is pervaded by a threatening feeling, a fear intensified by the unknown. Often the plot itself is built around a mystery, such as unknown parentage, a disappearance or some other inexplicable events. Three, an ancient prophecy that is related to the castle or its inhabitants. The prophecy is usually obscure, partial or confusing. Four, Omens, portents, and visions. Characters may have a supernatural power that enables them to forecast the future. And they might see disturbing dreams or visions. Sometimes, weird phenomena may be seen as a portent of coming events. For example, if the statue of the Lord of the Manor falls over, it may pretend his death supernatural or inexplicable events. Dramatic events might occur, such as ghosts or giants walking or inanimate objects, such as suit of armor or painting, coming to life. In some works, the events are ultimately given natural explanation, while in others, the events are truly supernatural. Number six, high or intense emotion. The narration may be highly sentimental and the characters are often overcome by anger, sorrow, surprise and especially terror. Characters suffer from raw nerves and feeling of impending doom. Breathlessness and panic are common. Number seven, damsels in distress. As an appeal to the pathos and sympathy of the reader, the female characters often face events that leave them fainting, terrified, screaming. A lonely, pensive and oppressed heroine is often the central character of the novel. Female characters usually suffer all the more because they are often abandoned and left alone. Number eight, Metonymy of gloom and horror. Metonymy is a subtype of metaphor in which something like thunder, for example, is used to stand for something else, like anger. In gist, the secret behind calling it Gothic fiction roots back to the Gothic architecture, which was named after the Goths, a nomadic Germanic group that fought against Roman rule in the late 300s and early 400s. Their ascent is widely believed to have marked the beginning of the medieval period across Europe. The term was coined by classicizing Italian writers of the Renaissance who attributed the invention and what to them was the non-classical ugliness of the medieval architecture to the barbarian Gothic tribes that had destroyed the Roman Empire and its classical culture in the 5th century CE. That's all for the Gothic fiction. Thank you.